to accept questions during the talk or after the talk? It doesn't matter if you, I mean, I can just talk and, and uh, whenever I am done, we can have the questions on if something really urgent that they want, someone want to ask during my talk, they can always interrupt me. I'm, I'm okay with both. So, but, but usually the, I mean, I keep talking and then at the end, I can have the, have the, have the, all the questions. Okay. okay then on us, let's start. Right. Uh, so, um, before we begin, um, uh, but I, having personally benefited from Bert's guidance, it is indeed a privilege, uh, you know, to introduce him. Uh, so Berkwajam has a very prolific record, which I shall try to summarize briefly. So Professor Burke, John Burke is a professor within the School of Computing, Engineering and the Built Environment at Edinburgh Napier University, the UK. He's a very accomplished researcher and academician with several highly prestigious memberships, including senior membership of IEEE and holds or has held editorships of IEEE transactions on vehicular technology, Elsewhere Computer Networks Journal, Elsewhere Communication Networks Journal, and IEEE Communication Letters. He has also published 65 journal papers, 65 conference papers, two books, seven book chapters, three approved US patents, and 19 patents waiting for approval. So uh, very prestigious, very pro prolific. He received his PhD in computer science from Istanbul Technical University, Turkey in 2011, his MSc in telecommunications engineering from the Chalmers University of Technology, Sweden in 2005, and his BSc in electrical engineering again from ETU in 2003. He has been an adjunct professor within the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Northeastern University, USA since 2017, and adjunct faculty within the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Engineering at ETU since 2022. He was an associate professor at Department of Computer Engineering at ETU between 2016 and 21, and a full professor between 2021 and 22. He has been involved with several industrial research activities with leading technology companies all over the world, including research scholarship program funding with Google DeepMind, Turkcell, Turkish Telecom, BDS Group Turkey, and Uniper Energy Germany. So this is a very brief resume of his uh, achievements. So without further ado, over to you, Berkojan. Okay, Anav, thank you very much. It was still really long and, and uh, I wasn't expecting that long introduction. Thank you very much. It was really good to hear myself <laughs> <laughs> from you. Uh, and uh, yes, without further ado, let me start again. Thank you very much for today for inviting me, Fatma Ojam. And then I know this is uh, also from uh, Özdur Ojam and Anav with you and uh, for all the audience. So the uh, title of my talk is Real-Time Digital Twin Systems for 6G Era. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about like 6G in general too much, but I will try to mention about all those different merging, emerging technologies between the, like we take from 6G, we take from the digital twin and try to buy, combine all of them. Oops. Yeah, this is my agenda. So I will try to finish in like 40 minutes. So if you keep me talking, I can talk forever. So I will try to be as concise as possible. Uh, this is one thing that we have learned right in, in our PhD time. So we should stop at some at some point. So this is the uh, I will give an intro. I, I mean I was uh, thinking to give an intro, but Ahnaf did it for me. So thank you, Ahnaf. So I, I will not do this. So. Uh, I will do it so briefly. I will talk about digital twin. I am sure you all know what is digital twins, but let's just uh, wrap it up quickly. And uh, how we are, uh, how do our, we are building it based on some 6G emerging technologies? Uh, how uh, do they build it using some vertical applications? And then our uh, lovely, newly digital twin as a service platform, uh, which is based in Edinburgh right now. Uh, so this is one of the, the like digital twin platform. Uh, the first platform in the academic environment uh, that is done is like, it was a proof of concept previously, but now we have a complete, even uh, that some companies are trying to buy from us, this kind of a platform that we have built uh, with a complete real, uh, real time uh, protocol stack. So this was the plan in my, in my head, but uh, Anav did it for me. So in this slide, the only thing that I wanna mention is the right hand side of the slide, which, uh, which are the, uh, real heroes of my of my uh, behind my research, my current research team, 
So you see all of, I mean, you see all of them. There are several of them are here based in Edinburgh. Some of them are in ITU Istanbul. Uh, some of them are in, in Boston, Northeastern. So we are like spread our all uh, three uh, different labs. And uh, as Anna also mentioned, I am the research and innovation director of BTS Group, which is uh, which is the biggest cloud and uh, auto network automation company in Turkey. So we are we continue to do like industrial research, uh, thanks to them. This is my uh, like a taxonomy of my research. I can say that I work in AI-enabled real-time communication management. So if, what I mean by real-time communication is that the, we are trying to model and optimize several different uh, challenges. We are heavily designing protocols since my background is uh, computer networks and computer communication. And uh, thanks to the several formal languages uh, knowledge, let's say, we are designing protocols like real-time protocols, non-real-time protocols, uh, which we can adapt to our digital twin systems. Uh, obviously we do what if analysis, predictions, automation, recommendation, and uh, real-time monitoring where we are implementing this especially if you are talking about digital twins we have several vertical areas that you have to deal with because unfortunately right now in the, the, the in the current state of the art of the digital twin so you have to uh, deal with the data so whatever data is coming from your digital twin this solves this problem of course, digital twin is not a problem solver by itself. It also uh, poses some challenges. So these are the different types of vertical are areas that digital twin can be a solution or can be a problem. For example, any kind of net zero application in 5G and 6G, wind energy, uh, like transportation, aeronautical systems, drone network, like hub, uh, high, high altitude platforms or low altitude platforms. Maritime systems, we have some work on maritime systems, some project going on, several different types of smart cities, smart city application, and uh, some critical infrastructures. This is the currently uh, digital twin enabled real-time communication outcome that we have, our real-time digital twin as a service platform based on Edinburgh. This is a, like a, uh, picture recently we took it from our lab so as you see the, we just have a screen at the end because in digital twin so we you just see i will explain like in a couple of minutes so you see uh, what you see the real life in one screen and you see the future in another screen so you have to like monitor it everything in real time what are different types of contribution we have here we have uh, predictive analysis recommendation what if scenarios real time monitoring obviously uh, we try to decrease uh, what we call the worst case latency, uh, like tail latency. Uh, we try to increase uh, what we call like age of twin in communication, try to uh, make as real time as possible. Uh, how we do that, I will explain you, which is also impl uh, implementable, let's say to 6G communications and 6G computing, uh, some knowledge graph-based modeling. We have two-way uh, real-time communications uh, between our uh, testbed and our control tower. <clears throat> we have several partners uh, like BTS Group in Turkey. We have Microsoft, uh, Queens, Uniper. We have some other uh, companies and research group that we are heavily working, including University of York, for example, including Northeastern, obviously. We have some work with the Nebraska Lincoln as well. So we have different types of uh, partners and project going on uh, with our digital twin platform. So what is digital twin? As you see in this figure, uh, when I, I was in uh, Globcom this this uh, December and they have this twin tower, which is a real twin actually. And this is obviously, this is, a, this is not a real digital twin that we are talking about. This was a question that I have been asking several, I mean, since four or five years that I'm uh, in this digital twin, uh, research. This is an avatar, and in an avatar, actually, the, the, the real-time uh, position of this person is lying down. So one of the main uh, description uh, of digital twin is that you are monitoring everything in real time. So whatever it's happening, you see it in your monitor. So avatar is not a digital twin. So what what is a digital twin? For example, in NASA, they are trying to really mimic the real-time behavior of a <clears throat> of a space of a spacecraft, uh, like in a small environment, of course. But the, as the spacecraft moves up, uh, it really moves up in the in this uh, testbed environment. This is some kind of what we call the 
uh, digital twin. So we were also asking uh, what is digital twin to AI? And uh, I'm sure you are all aware of this kind of uh, like text to image based deep learning algorithms. So I was asking as a prompt engineer, I assume you also know about what is a prompt engineer. So this is quite a fancy type of engineers engineering uh, these days. So I was asking like, draw me a digital twin model of an oil plant. He did an okay job. I mean, as you see in this in this uh, pictures, according to Night, uh, Night Cafe. Uh, so he tries to mimic me, the real time uh, digital twin of an oil plant. Actually, the thing that I liked with this, with this, with his response is that usually Night Cafe gives you one picture as an answer. When you ask a digital twin, he gives you two, two pictures, which is good, which I liked it. So they have uh, this kind of uh, learning mechanisms even to this uh, deep learning algorithms about digital twin, which is a good step for us. Okay, so uh, what we mean by digital twin, uh, imagine two screens, as you see in your, uh, in your monitor right now. In one of the screen, you see a real-time monitoring. So you see what you have in your real life, okay? So you can have uh, any kind of uh, 5G, 6G communication, Wi-Fi, Li-Fi, LoRa enabled communication from any, from any IoT device. And uh, we are doing some kind of a real-time monitoring, which has already been done actually. So this is not something new for us. There are several different types of uh, software available publicly available, freeware, payware, that uh, you can just uh, run in your, in your server and then they can monitor, they can, mon they can just grab some uh, data from, your, from any kind of IoT service and then monitor, like gives you these graphs in real time. But what we mean by digital twin is the second, uh, is the inclusion of the second monitor, which is like some kind of online and real time services while you are monitoring, you, are, you keep monitoring in real time. This kind of service can be a simulation, can be what-if scenarios, can be any kind of AI, ML uh, type uh, solution, optimization, recommendation, whatever it is. So by digital twin, I mean this real-time binding of these two different worlds, reality and the future. This is the catch behind digital twin. That's why this is different than simulation. That's why this is different than real-time monitoring. That's why this is different than any type of emulation environment. So you have some kind of an already existing environment, which is you see at that moment in your digital, digital system. And you are trying to see the future. For example, you see me now, I'm trying to explain something. Meanwhile, if you try to make a digital twin of this scenario right now, you will see in another screen, that uh, while I am talking about this, what if in 10 minutes from now I start singing? What if I start jumping? What's gonna happen? This type of what if analysis that you are uh, like making your algorithm learn thanks to any kind of machine learning algorithm, including quantum machine learning this day that we are trying to uh, get into it because it's quite, it's obviously it's quite fast for us. Uh, you try to see this two environment and then by digital twin, this real-time communication means uh, in the future, when I have this kind of an maybe unrealistic scenario, some kind of feedback I am getting to my real time. So if I am singing in 10 minutes, everyone will go. So my digital twin part will feedback me this kind of information. So it will, I will see in my real-time screen saying that, okay, back, please don't sing because if you keep, if you start singing, people will go. So this time, I, mean, it's, I know it's some kind of an absurd example, but just to give you a kind of an insight about the real catch of a digital twin, okay? So the, the definition relies on the, on the name itself, actually. You have to have two things, like a twin, real, real time and the future. It, it doesn't have to be future all the time. You can just simulate your real time environment and then see some possible scenarios, okay? That you don't want to implement in real time because it's because of the costy uh, infrastructure, et cetera. For example, if you want to uh, build up a logistic or a supply chain of an hydrogen energy from uh, Scotland to Germany, 
you don't want to do it uh, before without uh, simulating, but at the same time, you want to grab information in real time from wind turbines. So you are monitoring your wind, tur wind turbines in real time. And at the same time, you are building in the, in the, in the second screen, your supply chain so that you can run it and see how thing goes. And then if everything goes correctly, according to the real time feedback, you uh, real time data that you are gathering, you are giving a feedback to your mechanism saying that, okay, it's good, it's good to go. You can continue. <clears throat> this is the uh, terminology and this is like a big picture. Uh, we have services, data information and output and control. So you have a physical space, which is directly mimic the, to your virtual space. And then you have a service space in order to give some extra information uh, to you in order to decide accordingly. Uh, the difference, what is the difference between simulation and digital twin environment? In the simulation environment, you may, you are see what may happen in the system. And in the digital twin, you are actually seeing what is happening in the system. This is another fancy uh, cycles or fancy uh, graphs that we love uh, as academics to, to use, I'm sure. So this is a hype cycle. This is from Gardner. So this is to show the current uh, trend for us. It's just one indicator. This is not the one that you, you, you can rely on, but this is just a, a one of the trend that you can have an idea at least. On the left-hand side, you see um, from Scobus, not, this, not the hype cycle actually, it's kind of a <clears throat> graph to show the popularity of uh, digital twin. This is in 2023, we will update it for 2024. So it keeps increasing and uh, from diff different, uh, several different sectors, including engineering, computer science, mathematics, energy sector, physics, uh, material science, decision, de de decision science, social science, business, etc. And on the right hand side, as I said, this is like a hype cycle that you see. As you as you can as you can like uh, notify from this hype cycle, uh, there the in the 2022 hype cycle, the uh, open telemetry, observatory driven development, like industry cloud platform, which are the basics basic infra which are the infrastructure behind uh, digital twin, are being uh, developed like in there an innovation trigger. And uh, so in the like previous, one of the previous hype cycle, you can also see the uh, 2018, that the digital twin is quite in the top version of this cycle. So uh, all the sectors, all the engineering sectors and in other vertical area, they are moving their uh, focus to the digital twin in order to uh, have an idea about their physical environment, also to see the, for to see the future but not only to see the future, but also understand what can happen if you are, if they are uh, changing some kind of a system in their current uh, physical environment. So digital twin is quite, is becoming a hot topic uh, both for us in the research, as researchers and in the industrial area. This is the market. Uh, so as you see, digital twin market size, uh, like in the, up to 2028, is valued up to like uh, several billion, like more than three billion uh, in twenty in twenty twenty, and it's gonna become like almost fifty billion by twenty twenty six, because we see that the digital twin will be will replace the current IoT structure. So we also have another research topic which is called Internet of Twins. So we are trying to connect all this different virtual environment to have a complete virtual structure which is uh, also uh, linked us to meta and metaverse. And uh, these are all uh, outcoming by this popularity, as you see in this, in this uh, market graph, like several different sectors, including <coughs> manufacture, agriculture, automotive, energy utilities, healthcare, uh, like retail, residential areas, etc., like smart cities. So how we build it, we need data, as I said, we can have several different types of data sets, data types, XML, JSON, even uh, like CSV and Excel files, PDF. We have IoT devices, we have historical databases. We are merging all of them. Uh, we are building uh, middlewares. We are building protocol stacks to make them communicate among themselves. 
and then build this uh, digital twin architecture. Uh, this digital, digital, digital twin architecture also uh, being being fed by the this different uh, AI enabled mostly algorithms uh, that they are uh, also building what we call services and this whole different types of areas build us what we call the digital twin. This is heavily related with the recent topics with 6G because in 6G we have lots of different types of different type uh, different data types and different real-time mechanisms. So we are heavily benefiting of this research results of 6G. Here we are uh, implementing uh, digital twin in order to solve uh, 6G problems. As you see, as, as, you, know, as you know, as uh, we are researchers, we can have two different types of approaches. One approach is that uh, digital twin is a good thing for us. Let's have benefit of it. On the other side, digital twin has this kind of challenges. Let's solve it. So uh, we are approaching uh, the problem from this to basic research perspective, and then try to solve both digital twin as a good thing or digital twin as a bad thing. Try to solve uh, different problems accordingly. <clears throat> so as I said, we have different formats, structured and unstructured. We have static, semantic, and dynamic data to use in this platform. Uh, how we can uh, like uh, use of 6G KPIs uh, to be uh, for in order to enable the digital twin. As you know, digital uh, 6G comes with a huge data rate with a lovely amount of uh, delay, uh, like a sentiment a centimeter level position precision and uh, five nine of reliability. So we are using all this good part of 6G and then try to implement our uh, digital twin environment accordingly. So we have three uh, more, three times more spectral uh, density with us, 10 times more energy efficiency. So we try to benefit all these different good things from the, the taking from 6G and then implement to our digital twin platform. And this is the basic idea of a structure, uh, of a digital twin uh, structure. We have three layer, you can have five layer as well. We, if you want to put more layer into physical digital digital services one, but the basics it's three layers. So you are collecting data. When you collect data, you are, I mean, in order to pass this data to the digital environment, you use 6G, you use 5G, you use different types of technologies to make it as real time as possible. Uh, then you have your digital environment. Uh, in your digital environment, you are using simulation, optimization services, control logics, dashboards, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, 3D visualization. And then you are passing to the service layer in order to like give some kind of feedback to your user or getting some feedback from them in order to improve the learning mechanism of your digital twin. Here, one extra uh, bullet I want to open to AR and VR. Uh, by virtual reality, uh, you can think about like a like an avatar. Maybe you you are uh, just sitting in your current position. You are let's say putting a glass uh, VR glass. You keep your position as it is. You are giving some input to that device, and this device behave as if you are a dinosaur. Okay, so this is some kind of a virtual reality or you are in a different environment, but actually you are not in a different environment. Whereas in the augmented reality, which is based, based as you know, which is also based on like augmented graphs and everything, quite a research enabled topic. So you are uh, like transferring yourself or your real time environment to digital environment, then you can come up with like several different types of online solutions. For example, you have uh, probably you may know if you are traveling like me a lot. There's a flight radar 24 application like for the plane monitoring. Okay, there are like free version and paid version obviously. And then uh, if you are like uh, opening your uh, device and then to, 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 to put it to the cloud, you can see in real time the plane. So the, the, the plane is real time is going and then they are digitalized like they are augmented to your environment. They don't do a digital twin since they are not showing you what is going to happen in 10 minutes if this 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 pilot goes with that speed. 
what type of vertical speed that is going to land if it goes with uh, from this meteorological environment for example you don't give you, they don't give you this kind of information if they if they uh, gave those kind of, those information it would become a digital twin actually so uh, we are passing from virtual to augmented from augmented to the digital twin area, to the digital twin area if you may call <clears throat> one of the uh, from this augmented graphs and augmented reality uh, let me also talk about uh, one of the technologies that we have, which is graph databases that we are heavily relying on, storing our uh, XG, let's say, uh, digital twin data, because we can grab quite well using our uh, like uh, particular queries. We can perform complex queries quickly, and we can have a real-time insight into the performance and condition of the physical assets. Obviously, uh, with the graph database, you can have a better uh, relationship mapping. Why we need this? Going back, see, you have different types of data files, and then you want to merge them. Not to, You don't have one type, one set of data, data type. So the, 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 instead of just listing uh, the, your data, you are just mapping your data uh, thanks to the relationships. Then this uh, helps a lot while building our real-time digital twin. We are more flexible, we are more scalable. We are trying to like uh, combine different formats and structures. <clears throat> Sorry. How we build it, uh, there are uh, like several uh, tools for that. For example, we are using Neo4g. You can have your own, you can code your own database or your own graph database as well, your own ontology as well. And uh, you try to give uh, like different uh, benchmarks and you see that the, the query time that you are uh, facing thanks to the graph databases is way uh, lower than the, the several different types of databases. So it makes us uh, like an attractive solution to build uh, for our physical data, physical uh, layer of our digital twin uh, infrastructure. What else? Uh, here you see the database part. Here we see the communication part. This is a, like for this slide, I can talk for forever because uh, as Özdün Hocam knows, I am also based on computer uh, networks and computer communication. So these are different types of already existing well-known technologies as well as the new technologies that you are, con you are connecting your uh, assets, your physical assets into uh, your virtual environment, which is like, for example, control tower that we have in Edinburgh here. Uh, you can use like MQTT based protocols. You can use Wi Fi, Li Fi, LoRa, LoRa One. It depends. Here, when we are talking about real time systems, we are uh, trying to push ourselves to use, to not to use basic client server, server approach because this is not that suitable for us, even though uh, WebSocket is a, is, is a lifesaver for us. We are also uh, trying to build some kind of a, like a broker-based approach where some kind of uh, like publishers are putting their data. And as long as the data exists, so the subscriber can come and grab. So this kind of uh, like broker-based approach really helps us to enable this uh, like real time and a bit 6G enabled technologies. Apart from the, apart from that, we also use event triggered approach based uh, rather than a message triggered approach. Uh, whenever an event, a new event comes, so you can grab it or the, you, the, the, the subscriber can come and uh, build, like generate an event for you and your data is ready to be grabbed. So this is some kind of a real time uh, trick that we are building in our, in our uh, compete uh, infrastructure. Of course, this is also needed for a feedback mechanism. If you are using, because we have several 6G uh, studies as well, and projects as well, which we are combining digital twin, you can directly get benefit of this uh, uh, low lead latency of the 6G approach or 5G approach. But if you want to also rely on the high level, higher uh, layer technologies, you can also, you can always, a trick about the pro about the protocol by designing a new one or building a, mid a middleware one. 
the integration uh, we <clears throat> heavily use uh, uh, open source platforms even though as you see as you have seen we have several we have several partners several big partners they have their own platform so we are also using thanks to microsoft for example we are heavily using the azure platform and that we are giving some more more like a, a recommendation to them actually uh, we are trying to like have the eclipse platform for us we use eclipse ditto as an open source framework in order to uh, in order for us to to build digital twin of the device connecting to the internet we all we also have uh, what is called an open source platform hono another adapter to get connect to get our iot device connected using our uh, like uh, broker like mqtt or any kind of http so you can have a iot solution in the in the front end try to come up you know according to your according to your specific uh, vertical area of course the uh, ai is everywhere and uh, we are trying to use ai i am not an ai person so we are not building new ai mechanism we are not, we are just using the power of ai here we are trying to implement ai mechanisms in our in our digital twin based real time uh, systems approach what to do to do risk management fault management uh, like again what if scenarios to have uh, more agility sustainability the decision making parameter decision making algorithms uh, and then of course to have predictive maintenance when you google digital twin the one of the benefits that you will see directly is the predictive maintenance so this is this is heavily done by companies this is heavily also we are we are we are using it in our research we try to as its name implies we are trying to predict when it's going to get broken so we try to predict the maintenance time in order to predict the maintenance time in your second screen you have to get real time data uh, so we are just using different ai mechanism to to get an answer about that so this is the whole picture uh, you have a physical domain <clears throat> sorry you have a physical domain that where you can have all your design and deployment your operation and your exp uh, expansion like different types of base stations or nodes etc and uh, you pass to the digital domain okay so as if you are mapping your aircraft with your phone so you are in the digital domain so you now know your uh, small aircraft in your phone you can see you can see him flying with uh, several online uh, data like Lufthansa this number going from Amsterdam going from Munich to Istanbul blah blah this kind of altitude etc so you have in your digital platform then you you can come up with uh, process like initial processing or different types of models that you can implement to that to come up with a different solution artificial intelligence comes into the scene thereafter uh, to learn optimize and test according according to your uh, to the data that you have just gathered uh, your your component and collective intelligence can come into the scene we have a project actually going on at the, at the university of york so we are trying to use like crowdsourcing to in order to grab data and then we are just uh, processing the data where it is like uh, in the in the in the in the uh, in the edge platform not we are not sending the data to a cloud environment you know uh, in order to mimic the collective intelligence and then using that in collective intelligence you are you are feedbacking back to what type of uh, air quality for example in that current area and then what type of recommendation you can give so uh, 6g is everywhere here so you try to build the physical and uh, physical domain thanks to thanks to it you you can send the data with a quite low latency with, with, with digital with 6g environment and you can use artificial intelligence accordingly what type of artificial intelligence what are different uh, techniques these are another topic and uh, this is of course like uh, another uh, ai focus uh, part of this work 
uh, these are just some examples. As I said, I am not going to focus, even though I, I mean, uh, I also have uh, 6G works. This is not a, the, the focus of this talk. So that there, there are uh, different technology that you, we can implement. These are, this is like a short list. We can have more, uh, like new uh, frequency bands, like terahertz. You can have OAM multiplexing. Intelligent surface is a huge topic. So it can be used in the data, data gathering part uh, to get uh, as much data as possible. Uh, you can integrate from uh, satellite networks, grab data from satellite. You see at the beginning of my talk, I was mentioning different types of data set. One data set can, can come from them and you can fit to, to your graph database. Uh, you can have, uh, of course, uh, again, machine, machine learning AI. And uh, recently we are heavily used, we, are, we start to use uh, like quantum uh, enabled communication. Another communication area that I am not familiar, but uh, I know several strong colleagues uh, with Coach University as well. They are working on molecular communication, uh, which are also colleagues in Cambridge. So you can come up with different types of solutions in which I don't, so I'm not, it's not my area. But it can come up with different types of solutions, different types of 6G enabled solutions to be implemented to digital twin. Uh, I had already mentioned about this. So this is like a 6G driving application, like we can we also call them the killer application, like connected robotics, AR and VR, or we even a mixed reality. Uh, blockchain and trust, this is an interesting topic that uh, this has to be talked again uh, separately with another talk maybe. Uh, like whenever you have, you are grabbing data so frequently so and so much, there is a, of course, a, there is a security, safety, and trust uh, pro issue to deal with. Uh, also, blockchain can be an issue to solve, but this is a huge uh, area to talk about. And uh, of course, wireless uh, computer inter interactions and all this, uh, they uh, all these different types of applications uh, feed us to build our uh, digital twin, 6G enabled real-time digital twin environment. And we all believe, we believe that the, these different types of uh, 6G enabled KPIs build, uh, will serve us to build our, uh, like, uh, they, they will help us to build a better digital twin environment. A particular uh, information here is that uh, AIoT, which is like uh, you are just uh, bringing the, uh, the, the, the intelligence to the edge meaning that the, the device that, that is collecting the data is also processes by itself. It's nothing by edge computing actually. So we had some kind of a giving another name like artificial IoT uh, because it's important for 6G as well because you can have a process there uh, and then you are sending this already uh, pre-processed data to some other uh, node that uh, you think that may include it in the system or you can send it to the cloud. So this is an AIoT that you can use for data analysis, decision making, efficiency, and automation, online learning abilities, uh, several different types of complex tasks. Quickly, I will also mention uh, about different applications. So for these things from now on, these are not things that I did. So there are other different uh, digital twin applications that are already existing. Uh, as you may remember from the previous slides, uh, there are different vertical sectors like aerospace, automotive, construction, transportation, uh, healthcare that the digital twin has been implemented. For example, this is from Australia. Uh, they have spatial digital twin. Okay, uh, this is New South Wales. They are just uh, monitoring in real time the some part of their city and then giving you some real time information. Where is digital twin here? while giving this information, you can have some kind of a recommendation accordingly, saying that uh, this, uh, in this sub part of, in this neighborhood, the restaurants are not, are not that expensive. So in the evening, this can, I mean, and that then they were not crowded yesterday. Maybe you can go today, according to your own, your own uh, data that you are providing, your personal data. They are trying to give some kind of recommendation. Of course, this is a proof of concept level platform, so it has to be improved, but that is quite a, a definition of what we have as a digital twin. So here, one 
trick that we, we also do in our platform is that uh, for a digital twin, you have to fit back to the data uh, provider, not to the observer. For example, they are giving feedback to me, but they have to give feedback to the sensor that they are collecting. So this is, we also do the same. So we have a platform, we have monitors, as you see here in the lab. So you have the platform and uh, you are giving feedback to me when I am looking. So the real digital twin should have, you should give feedback to the sensors itself that it's gathering information. The sensors or whatever it is should, should uh, transform into an actuator and then you get an, it can act, it should act accordingly. So this is the real, the real digital twin uh, definition, but we are coming to that uh, slowly. This is from Zurich, uh, another lovely city, of course, not as lovely as Istanbul or as, as I mean, let me put Edinburgh and Boston in the, the first three and then Zurich is another lovely city that <laughs> this is really nice. So this is like a digital twin uh, in general about mostly the historical uh, places that you may see and try to like a bit more built environment level, not like a user level, but uh, try to see different types of heat maps. And then uh, if there is, there is a need of maintenance and restoration, some kind of a, a predictive uh, alarm or any kind of a, like a warning, giving to the to the user as well. Again, to the user, to the monitoring user. This is in Singapore, uh, like for the real-time monitoring of the, of, uh, of some kind of an underground uh, for the Singapore Land Authority uh, in order to have an idea about uh, what is going on and what type of solution that may happen. So here they are using this platform in order to predict uh, possible fa failures and then give information again to the system, not to the system itself, but to the monitoring monitoring uh, entity. Oops. This is interesting one. This is also, I mean, not that one, but the, the area we are also working, this is the oil and gas, let's say the energy, uh, try to uh, predict the behavior of this big guy uh, in the offshore environment, what type of uh, efficiency he will have in 10 days if, he stays as it is, or should you move it? As you may imagine, moving this guy from one location to another is not as easy as uh, you move like a small boat. So you have to predict, you have to have efficient predictions. Uh, so digital twin is used uh, with this type of predict real-time predictions. So they try to have different types of analysis of the possible uh, locations and then uh, try to give uh, recommendations accordingly. Same, a similar mentality is done with the wind turbines. Uh, yeah, they are diagnosing it, uh, the current behavior, and then try to give you uh, some future analysis in their uh, in their platform. They say that okay, if the wind goes like that for the for the next ten days, uh, you can just uh, reposition some of the blade like that you can uh, like shut some of them down you can you need to buy new one because the efficiency is not that much etc cetera, etc cetera. this kind of energy engineering based uh, terminology comes into the scene in order to implement your digital twin uh, infrastructure into this uh, wind farm sector <clears throat> and this is for the warehouse control how they do that uh, as you see here, this is like a simulation environment in this particular example. So you are giving all your data from your warehouse and uh, you can even predict the, the movement or the paths or the, the, the ways uh, of your forklifts. And uh, believe me, the, 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 this, the prediction of this forklift can save you several couple of thousands of dollars because it's really uh, like 10, 15 seconds of uh, less time of a forklift to take some of the uh, boxes, some of the parcels from one of the shelves, really, uh, I mean, uh, gain a lot of time and it's quite costly for, the, for them. So they try to predict possible optimized route for the forklift, for example. It can be a safety issue. It can be some other things as well. So uh, what type of popularity of the low, low ranked parcels in that shelf, what type of 
uh, new order I should do these different types of uh, again I don't know I'm not an expert in the logical uh, in the logistic sectors obviously but the different types of dynamic uh, digital twin modeling can uh, can help us as it's really helping us to monitor the in real time the warehouse and pred uh, predict or giving give a recommendation recommendation to us. This is an health uh, sector, digital twin, digital twin of an organ. This is a tricky, of course, if you have to first allow me to get your data, your, your, your body data, which is something that I wouldn't give. So this is some kind of a controversy at the same time, but there is quite an interesting area to improve. At least I know, and I am, I am inside of one project actually in NHS, which is the Sağlık Bakanlığı of, of Turkey in, in UK, they are uh, like trying to move some of, I mean, several, hospital, several uh, hospitals of theirs to like smart hospitals. And then they try to monitor anonymous patients who they are entering to the hospitals and then according to their face recognition, they, if they are happy, they are uh, having uh, so much pain or they are okay. And then give some order, give some uh, kind of uh, an order to their patients and then serve them accordingly. This kind of smart hospitals, or they are trying to control the vent, the, the air quality of, of several rooms, uh, the operation rooms, etc., to give an idea to them so that they can serve in a better way. This smart hospital mentality, it really binds with digital twin. Here, 6G is not applicable because the, the, the terahertz or the smart antenna part of the digital twin, which is of 6G, which is a, some kind of an interference, in, possible interference solution, interference for the uh, healthcare devices is not something that is so wanted by medical sector. So they are heavily related with our traditional communication schemes like Wi-Fi or even cables, Ethernet or uh, LoRa one, so they can have every six every six hours just one data to monitor the environment. Anyway, uh, this is a, a huge sector that digital twin is uh, is being is started to being heavily used, like healthcare, uh, virtual organs, genomic medicine, personalized health information, customized drug treatment, plan, planning surgery. These are all different types of area that the digital twin can be used. I am almost done since 10.50, so I am on my time in two minutes, I am finishing. This is the dashboard that I was uh, showing the, the, the picture in the, at the beginning. Uh, this is the digital twin as a service platform that we have. So we have a data layer platform that we are gathering data uh, recently from two companies in, in US, in UK, sorry, M2M Cloud and North. The, the twin layer is being uh, provided remotely and in an online manner, quite successfully from BTS, from Turkey, from uh, the from our ISI campus in ITU, which I am also a, a faculty member, and uh, the service layer, which is done in, in Napier. Uh, I mean, the whole structure is done in, in Edinburgh. Uh, so we try to come up with a complete uh, like platform. These are just some screenshots uh, what is the main idea? As I said, so we have two screen. On the left hand side, you see the re in real time what is happening. So the graph. On the right hand side, you see some kind of an alarm. So this is a monitoring of a of a room. Actually, this is a big room with small like a lab from with small desks and uh, smaller rooms, a small chapel, let's say, small like a big area. And uh, if the air quality goes like that in 10 minutes, uh, in 15 minutes, so you, you can adjust the tabulation, you can adjust the frequency. There will be like meeting room, uh, CO2 level will be increasing. So please do something. This is some kind of a alarm that this gives to you, not to the, to the, to itself right now, to the, to this uh, air quality sensors, but we are replacing them with actuators and then we are building this two-way communication like in the real in real time, we have it in the simulation, but we build it in the in the in the test bed as well. So whenever there is an alarm like that, while I give this, I take this information. I also send it to the to the actuator itself, so that the open the the, the window is opening by himself. This is another uh, another uh, example that we we are gonna work. Uh, shortly with a, a branch of Turkish Airlines. So they are really interested on uh, this uh, real-time, near real-time monitoring and 
a recommendation. This is some kind of a aeronautical core network selection in order to uh, improve the, the internet connection of aircraft. Right now, the aircrafts are using some kind of a roaming technology. So whenever you are you take off, they, you use you, you use your the data the the, the 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 connection of your base station there, and then you can jump uh, according to the like manually according to the I mean by the control of the pilots, obviously, but. Uh, you can come up with some kind of a clustering mechanisms saying that for the net for the following 10 minutes if the aircraft can get a, a, some kind of a channel from some other some other uh, aircraft which are nearby in that clustering in that uh, using that clustering algorithm they can have a better channel bandwidth leading to a better internet connectivity this kind of uh, futuristic recommendation are to be done this is the the pro, I mean, power pro, uh, production prediction that we also have in our platform. And uh, at the end, uh, let me tell you that uh, two books that I mean we submitted and we get acceptance and we are just fulfilling the base the the, the, the final documents uh, about digital twins. Uh, they are all like the monogram type books, so not just collection of uh, different types of. Uh, papers, but just uh, like an informative, informative books that we will also, you, uh, they will be also used in, 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 the, in the modules, in the lectures, in the courses. One is Digital Twin for 6G by different, uh, with different colleagues of mine. Another one, Digital Twin for Cybersecurity, uh, that is coming out in March uh, 24 and June 24.